question for y'all. So like, it, it snowed a lot this past week, right? So who made a snowman? Okay. All right. Put your hands down. Hands down. Who had a snowball fight? Okay. Cool. Cool. Hands down. Um, okay. Yeah. Who, who was inside all week and didn't go to the snow one time? <laughs> like, help me, help me. <laughs> That's also me. I rolled my son. One more question. What's a good question? Snow ice cream. Oh, yeah, who ate the snow? Okay, hands down, hands down, hands down. Who ate the yellow snow? Ooh. Okay. Hopefully, none of y'all did it. Y'all's dogs may have. I think mine did a few times. I don't know. She's crazy. But. Hey, so the snow, the snow happened, okay? So, and I say that because we had this great plan, and the snow, shh, the snow, the snow in LA is melted, so we can just like stop talking about it, right? But, uh, so the snow happened, and we had all these great plans for like a night of worship, but then God said, uh, just wait till next month. So that's the plan. We're gonna do the night of worship still, but it'll be on March 4th, okay? So it'll be the first Wednesday of March. We're gonna do it still. It'll be at the same time, 7 to 9, same place, auditorium, okay? It's going to be all Siggy, 6th grade through 12th grade. That means all of y'all in this room need to be there, okay? And also, if they're not here, and you have friends who are not here, tell them, bro, sister, like, whatever, let's go. You know what I mean? Y'all know what I mean? Like, okay, great. All right, so that's really all I have. Uh, and then also, camp is coming up, so sign up for it. Because, again, we believe that Jesus transforms lives, right? That's why we're here. Are y'all even awake? Okay, awesome. We believe that Jesus does what? Transforms lives, and it happens at camp every year. So camp is fun, yes. We play games, it's awesome, I love it. Best week of the year. But, first things first, it's about Jesus, always is. Sign up for camp, you don't regret it, okay? Let's all stand up and kind of come to the front. I'm gonna pray for us. And kind of stand, and let's not have any in the back. So all you guys back there, come forward. Um, have a nice family prayer. So find your neighbor, arms around their shoulders. We're all one big Siggy family here. So y'all come a little close, but not too close. That I have claustrophobic issues. All right. So I'm gonna pray. So let's bow our heads together and pray. To our Father. All right, pray with me. God, we just thank you for who you are. Uh, we thank you for really this chance to gather here each week, and uh, thank you for the snow this past week where we had fun. We had some time off from school uh, just to enjoy your creation and enjoy uh, the outdoors. But God, I pray in this moment that uh, we'll be present, that you'll remove distractions, and um, that as the band plays and as Monet speaks, that we will just know our identity is found in you and you only. Uh, and that hopefully these students will know how much you love them uh, as a result. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Who's ready to worship the Lord tonight? Give me a whoop whoop. Let's try it again. Ready? Who's, who's ready to worship the Lord tonight? Awesome. Okay, so we did this song a couple weeks ago. Everyone should know it. It's this is Amazing Grace. Okay?
in the peace of God surrounding me, casting out all fear.
are. And then we get to sing these truths to you, God. Because without you, these words mean nothing. God, and I pray that you speak to every individual in this room. God, that without you, we're nobody. God, you're, you're everything. God, we love you and we praise you. And we thank you for your son and what he did on Calvary, God. Father, we just love you and we praise you in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, hey, real quick. Here are some instructions. All right. If you are a female, 6th grade through 8th grade, I can't even see y'all, but I'm talking to you. Y'all stay here, okay? So if you're a girl, all grades, y'all stay here. Don't leave yet, guys. If you are a guy, 6th grade through 8th grade, we'll be in Building E carpet room. So y'all be with you guys. Girls stay in here. And we'll have Monet teach the ladies right now, okay? Thank you, Alex. Thank you. <laughs> I know you guys too. I'm so glad to see you guys. All right, girls. Okay, it's just us. I actually love this. Um, but for those who don't know me, my name is Monet, and I'm the Siggy Female Minister here at Stonegate, which just means I get to serve with some amazing men and women, and I get to hang out with you guys on Sundays, and our high school students, some of you guys are here on Wednesdays. Okay, so tonight we are starting a new series, and it is called Crucial Conversations. So over the next three weeks, we are going to talk about gender, what it means to be male and female. We are going to talk about the identity of a man. So you're actually going to have a guy come and speak to you guys and talk to you what a godly man is meant to be and the role that you girls play. And then last week, we are going to be talking about dating relationships and friendships and how to love and honor one another within those types of relationships. But tonight, we are going to talk about gender, more specifically, what it means to be female, since we're females. Now, girls, what I want you to do is I really want you to focus in. If you have a phone, I used to do this with my girls right here. Take your phone and put it in the bucket in front of you. Thank you. And if your chair is not facing me, literally turn it this way so your neck doesn't hurt once we're done. Um, I really want you girls to focus in tonight. Um, this is so important. Knowing who you are and why God created you the way that you are is so, so important because if we're being honest, it is so easy to look to the world for our, our identity, our value, and who we were created to be. It's so easy to look to social media, to look at the people who are popular in Hollywood like Kim Kardashian, even looking to the people in your schools who act a fool, and it's always tempting to act like they are, how they are acting, whether they know Jesus or not. And so what we're going to do tonight is really break it down. We're going to look to God's design of who he created you girls to be and the purpose he has given you. Um, I know how difficult the struggle is because when I was your age in middle school and high school, I actually struggled with an eating disorder. I looked to the world to tell me who I was supposed to be and how I was supposed to look. I looked to the world to tell me, tell me my value and the purpose that I was meant to have. And to me, it was through not eating. It was through being dependent upon the world to tell me that. And for you girls, what, I want you guys to yell out for a moment. It's just us so we can just like speak openly. What are some things that the world tells you that you're supposed to be as a female? Pretty? Skinny? Big butt. Big butt? If we're being honest, if we're being honest. Blonde hair, blue eyes. Blonde hair, blue eyes. Okay. What? A housewife with this type of thing? What else? I heard something over here. Civilized. Civilized. Girl, I've never heard that one. What? Girly. Girly. Okay. A pretty, pretty princess? Fair enough. Fair enough. We're not all that way. So those things. Thank you, girls, for interacting. Um, what the world tells us, girls, was never meant to define us. The world was not meant to tell us who we are and our purpose. God was. God designed us, God created us. Because when you girls follow the world, when I follow the world, it's like following the wind. 
One day it blows this way and the other day it blows the other. One day it tells you that you're supposed to be quiet and easygoing, wear scrunchies and crocs, and then the next month it changes and then you're supposed to be loud and in people's face. You're supposed to be wearing um, bands and carrying hydro flasks. And I guarantee you by next month it's gonna change. We weren't meant to follow the world. It leaves us empty. It leaves us anxious and feeling like we never are enough even when we have those things or we are those things. We were meant to look to God, the one who designed us and created us to figure out who we are as females and why he made it up, made us the way that he made us. So tonight, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna use God's word, which is inspired by and from God, to figure out who God designed females to be. And we're gonna see the purpose that he gave us. So this is our bottom line. God's design for you is on purpose and for a purpose. Okay, I'm gonna pray for our time real quick because prayer makes me happy, so bow your heads with me real quick. Father God, um, I just thank you for the opportunity to speak to these beautiful girls that you have created. Um, I thank you for your holy word that guides us and is meant to be our roadmap for life. Lord, I pray that you would just use me as an instrument for your glory, that you would speak through me to what these girls need to hear because I know you're trying to tell them something, each and every one of them. Use me, Lord, and um, may you be present with us. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen. All right. So in the beginning, when God created the world and everything in it, he created mankind. And in Genesis 1, it tells us that God created mankind in his own image, both male and female. So that means that God uniquely made man, or guys, with specific qualities and characteristics and they ultimately reflect a part of who God is. But just the same, you girls were uniquely and purposely made with qualities that you were meant to have specifically. And when you live those out, you actually get to reflect a part of who God is. Whether it be your beauty that is found within, your kindness, the way you love and care for those in need, all those things that we're about to talk about, when you live those out, you actually get to reflect God himself. So we're going to start in the book of Proverbs. We're going to be in Proverbs 31. So get a Bible if you don't have a Bible in the center of the table. Um, and we're going to be in the book of Proverbs, chapter 31 at the very end. Um, the book of Proverbs is in the Old Testament, which means it's the first, it's part of the first half of the book of the Bible. And it's going to be right after the book of Psalms. Don't be afraid to use your table of contents. That's literally how I learned the books of the Bible. And it's there to help you. So use it if you need to. Now, as you were searching there, Proverbs chapter 31. Um, as you were searching there, a proverb is simply a saying or truth that is quick or brief, but it's filled with meaning. So when you go to read the book of Proverbs after today, you'll find a lot of sayings or truths that are short, but filled with meaning, and they teach you how to be wise and live well. I actually love the book of Proverbs, and I'm reading in it right now, Proverbs chapter 31. It's literally the last chapter of the book of Proverbs. You're going to go to the very, very back of it. Okay, so this passage, Proverbs 31, it is describing a godly wife or woman. So in this passage, we are going to find characteristics that God designed females to be. Um, we're going to be in verses 25 to 30, and I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to read verse 30 first. And I'm going to do that because I want you girls to hear why this woman acted the way that she did. What inspired her to be this way? So if you will, start with me in verse 30. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord will be praised. Verse 25. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she can laugh at the time to come. Her mouth speaks wisdom, and loving instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the activities of her household and is never idle. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. Many women have done noble deeds, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord will be praised. Now I'm gonna reread this, but I'm actually gonna break it down and I'm gonna explain it a little bit more because I know sometimes the Bible's a little bit hard to understand. Verse 30, we're gonna start back at verse 30. Charm is deceptive. So that just means charm will fool you. People can act one way and then act another. And beauty is fleeting. It's not meant to last forever. But a woman who fears the Lord will be praised. Verse 25. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she can laugh at the time to come. This means that she has the strength of a young woman 
but also the honor and respect of an older woman, which allows her to laugh without fear whatever comes her way in life. Verse 26, her mouth speaks wisdom and loving instruction is on her tongue. So the words that she chooses to speak, she speaks to help and teach others. And not just that, but her words are spoken in love and in kindness. Verse 27, she watches over the activities of her household and is never idle. What this means is she takes care of herself and what is hers. And she's not idle, which means she's not lazy. She's hardworking. Verse 28, her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. Many women have done noble deeds, but you surpass them all. What this means is if you were to look at this, this woman, this girl in a group of people, she would stand out because she is known for being blessed by God. And she is known for the things that she does well and the things that she does with excellence and things that she does in goodness and in rightness. Charm is deceptive, again, it will fool you, and beauty is not meant to last forever, is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord will be praised. You see, girls, this is the design God created you to fulfill. And when you live this out, you reflect his character. You reflect who you were meant to reflect. And so for me, when I was struggling with my eating disorder, girls, I wasn't looking at the beauty that was found in God. I was looking at the beauty that was outward. And I was never meant to, as the Bible says, that's, it's fleeting, it's not gonna last forever. And I was more focused about the clothing that was outward that I was wearing rather than the strength and dignity that I was meant to have. And the biggest thing here, girls, is I was not rooted in fearing and following God. I was rooted in the world. I was focused on what the world was telling me, what the world was thinking of me. And that's what I want you girls to hear. This is who you were created to be as a female, but ultimately the most important thing, your design as a female is rooted in following and fearing God. Because when you fear and follow God, you naturally are the rest of these things. When you naturally have a relationship with Jesus, you naturally have strength and respect for yourself and others. You naturally speak words to help and teach others in love and kindness. You naturally take care of what is yours and you work hard. You naturally stand out because you are blessed by God and you do what is right and are known for excellence. It all starts with having a daily relationship with Jesus. Because a lot of you girls, you may have made the decision to follow Jesus, but it, it's daily. It's daily getting into your word. It's daily knowing him the way you would a best friend. And through that, you naturally live out those qualities. Okay, so one thing that I wanted to show you girls also is God knows you're not gonna do this perfect. This list here is never meant to make you feel ashamed. God knows that we have a sinful nature, that we live in a broken world, but at the root of what we are, when we follow him, this is who we were designed to be. And again, when we live this out, we get to reflect who God is, which I think is pretty cool. Now, we talked a little bit about the design, um, and now I wanna talk about why God created you the way that you are, the purpose that he has given you. So what I want you girls to do is turn to the book of John. So you're gonna go to the right, it's in the New Testament, so quite a ways to the right. You're going to go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And you're going to be in John chapter 15. And again, don't be afraid to use your table of contents. It's there for a reason. Um, so John is part of the Gospels or the Good News. And what that means is um, the Gospels are talking about Jesus' life and ministry here on earth. And so in this specific passage that we're going to read in John chapter 15, we're going to be in verse 16. Jesus is describing the God the Father's love for us, for you and for me. And I want you guys to listen in as I read this, because it's going to speak about the purpose, the reason why God created you the way that you are. So in verse 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you or entrusted you with the duty or responsibility for you to go and produce fruit and that your fruit should remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Now that first part is so important for girls, where it talks about, you did not choose me, but I chose you. Because deep down in every single one of you, there is a desire to belong. There is a desire to be seen, to be known, to be cherished. And I hope you girls never allow the world to make you feel ashamed for that. Because that is the way God made you. And God made you that way for reason, because he was meant to fill that need. He was meant to say, you are mine. Because for those of you have, who have made the decision to follow Jesus, you may have thought that you chose Jesus, but really, God chose you before you were even born. 
Before you were you even took a breath on this earth, God chose you and said, she's mine. She belongs to me. And he entrusted you or gave you the responsibility or duty to bear fruit and fruit that will last. Now, God's not telling us to go plant a bunch of apple trees or orange trees. This fruit is spiritual fruit. And some of you girls who are in children's church probably know the Fruits of the Spirit song, and I'm not going to sing it for you, but that's in Galatians 5. But the fruit that it's talking about here, it looks like lives that have been transformed by Jesus through the way we act, through the way we love others when it doesn't make sense, and through the way we serve others the way Jesus served us. I'm going to say it again. This fruit looks like lives that have been transformed by Jesus through how we act, through how we love, through how we serve the way Jesus served us. And this fruit, God's not just telling you to give you another thing to do. He's not just saying, oh, go do this. Bearing fruit is always rooted in a daily relationship with Jesus. Because, girls, when you read your word, when you pray and talk of God the way you would a friend, when you get to know him through who he truly is, when you learn about his love and how he died and he sings over you and he pursues you, you naturally want to go out and bear fruit. You naturally want to share about Jesus. You naturally want to love others when it doesn't make sense. You naturally want to serve. So we are called, your purpose in in being created female, exactly the way that you are, is purposeful, and that is to bear fruit. But again, it starts with a relationship with Jesus. Because I'm not just going to go love for the sake of loving. God doesn't want that. It starts with getting to know who he is. And when we figure out who he is, we naturally just want to go do it. We naturally just want to change other people's lives through loving and serving them. Now, there's one more scripture and passage I want to show you that talks about why God created you uniquely the way that you are as female. Because it's on purpose. It wasn't an accident that God created you the way that you are. So we're going to go backwards. We're going to go to the book of Matthew. And we're going to be in Matthew chapter 28, which is the very last chapter of the book of Matthew. So you're going to go through Luke to the left. You're going to go through Mark. And then you'll hit Matthew and you'll get the very end. So to the left. You go through Luke, then Mark, and then Matthew. At the very end, Matthew 28. Now Matthew is also part of the Gospels or the Good News. And so a man named Matthew who followed Jesus... He's sharing Jesus' life and ministry here on earth. So that's what the book of Matthew is. Now, this specific passage that we are about to read, Jesus has since been crucified and since in victory raised from the grave after three days. And he's about to go back to the Father, ascend into heaven. And these are the last few words that he tells his disciples or his followers that followed him throughout his ministry. So that means it's important. This is like almost like on his deathbed kind of words. These are, that means whatever he's going to say is important. So I'm going to read this, girls. And again, remember the purpose that God has given you and the way that he has created you as a female and even the unique qualities of who you are. Verse 18, Matthew 28, verse 18. Jesus came near and said to them, All authority or power to act has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Here it is, girls. Go, therefore, and make disciples, or followers of Jesus, of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. You see, girls, God, I want you to hear this. God created you female on purpose. It was never an accident. He created you with the things that you love, the things that you're good at on purpose. He has put you where you are for a purpose, whether it be on your basketball team, on your softball team, on your cheer, dance, swim team, whether it be in the classrooms that you are in, in the homes that you are in, the friend groups that you're in, it is all on purpose. And the purpose was to go bear fruit. Go change other, other people's lives through Jesus by the way you love when it doesn't make sense through serving them, through sharing about Jesus, through how you live your life, as we saw in Proverbs 31, your original design, and go make disciples wherever he has you. Share about who Jesus is and make followers of Jesus. Because girls, as I told you earlier, when I was your age, I didn't know Jesus. I know Jesus was there up in heaven, but I didn't know that he was real. And so I looked to the world. I looked to the world for who I was, for my value and for my purpose. And that caused me to compromise. I compromised taking care of myself. I compromised what was important to me, my values. And I'm gonna have a moment, girls, where I'm gonna call you out for a second. 
And I do this in love because I'm your sister in Christ. But when you don't know who you are and why God created you the way that you are, when you aren't looking to this or having a relationship with him daily, because some of you guys have made the decision to follow Jesus, but you're not doing it daily. You're not coming back to Jesus like you would your best friend. And you girls are compromising. Some of you girls are being disrespectful to your teachers because you see other people doing it and it's easy to do. Some of you girls are sending pictures to guys that you know you should not be sending. Some of you girls are allowing guys to touch you and do things to you that you should not be doing because you are compromising. You are not remembering who God created you to be and the purpose that he has given you. Some of you girls are even, you may be at school or even at city and you may see a girl that's by herself and your heart is telling you to go and be her friend and love her the way you would want to be loved. But because of the people around you, you're embarrassed to do that, so you don't go do it. And so what I want you girls to hear tonight is so, so important. You are created on purpose and for a purpose, and we can only look to God who created, created us and designed us to find that to design, and we can only look to his word to know our purpose. Because for me, girls, when I met Jesus, I was an adult, mind you. But when I met Jesus and I realized who he was, that he actually was alive and wanted to have a relationship with me, that he sang over me songs of love and he knew who I was and created me for a purpose and on purpose, it changed everything. I gave up that life that I lived that was so empty because, girls, even when I was the skinniest of skinny, even when I had all the things that I was supposed to have that the world told me that I was supposed to have, I still, still felt extremely empty. It still wasn't enough. And I guarantee you, girls, the things that you're pursuing of this world, even when you get it, it won't be enough. You'll still be anxious. You'll still be wanting something more because you were meant to find who you were in God. You were created for him and on purpose and for a purpose. So that's what I want you girls to hear tonight. I challenge you um, to know who you are, to know who you are created to be. And don't just go with the flow and go with where the world is going with how people are acting in their schools or how Kim Kardashian with her big butt is acting. <laughs> be who you were created to be. Because I guarantee you when you do it, it feels so good. I have never felt so much peace and joy than when I lived in God's design for me. It's hard, I get it girls. We are called to be set apart and it's hard to be different than how everyone else is acting. But I'm telling you girls, when you do it, it's like nothing else. It's like fitting into the perfect shoes that were made for you. It's like, eating that like perfect little Oreo that tastes like heaven. Like when you find that sweet spot, no matter how hard it is, nothing will be the same. Nothing will compare. Let me pray for you girls as you guys dismiss the table groups. Father God, um, I just thank you that you made these girls the way that you did. Um, down to their flaws, down to the things that they're insecure about, God, I just thank you for them because you made them wonderfully and remarkably. And I thank you, Lord, that... Um, your understanding that we mess up, that we may not always be exactly like the Proverbs 31 woman or girl, but you take us as we are and you created us for a purpose that is bigger than ourselves. You designed us so purpose purposely and perfectly and we get to reflect who you are to the world. I pray for strength for these girls as they go into their schools, to their sports teams, wherever they may be. I pray that they live life set apart, even if it's hard. I pray that they seek you personally daily and that they would find their original design, their original purpose. I love you, Lord, and I pray that you would bless their time and table groups. I pray that you would help them to be focused and um, just be present in their conversation, Lord. I love you, Lord, and I thank you for these beautiful girls. In Jesus' holy name, amen. All right, girls, thank you.